So, one of the things we have to learn about mixing paint is how each of these colors will have a different bias, a different strength quality. And that only happens through experience. So when, you, when you're first setting out to learn oils, keep it simple. Keep your palette small and eventually let it get bigger and bigger and bigger. One of the things we do here is the students do not start painting in color. Their very first painting is black and white. Now I lie a little bit because they're given one color with the black and white, an earth color. And what they have to do is learn how to mix a neutral gray. If it's pure black and white, it's cool. If it's pure brown and white, it's warm. So they have to introduce the two together to find a scale in the middle that's neutral. And that's them learning how to repeat it over and over again. So this is neutral. It's neither warm nor cool. All right. So which of these do you think has the strongest tinting property? I would say the black does. It has the strongest influence on, on the other two. Okay. But anyway, so I'm going to start to go for a little gray. So I'm adding, I know my gray is going to be on the light range. So I need more white than I need black. I know black is very strong, so I'm, I'm going to take the, the littlest amount. Right? Think of peppercorn, little peppercorn sizes of paint to, to, to start mixing with. Because you'd be surprised how quickly it influences. Now do you notice already how my value is almost the same value as your paper? But do you notice the tint is bluer? See, it's a little bluer. But if I introduce a little brown, I can start to neutralize it. See, what's great about this is you can pick it up, get it off, scrape it, push it into itself, and really stir a nice, flat, clear mixture. You can't do that with a brush. You don't know how much paint is in the brush, how streaky the brush <coughs> is. So, see, that requires a little bit more experience to, to know how to pick up with your brush and mix. You see what I mean? Because that's, that's one of the culprits of why people paint muddy paintings. They just aren't controlling their brush at all. And they're using one brush. Or maybe two or three, but they're going from light to dark, and it's such a dramatic difference, and they're trying to go from red to green to yellow, and they don't realize their brush is still contaminated with a bunch of other colors. So this is a kind of a, a neutral gray, isn't it? And that's all you really need for, for this guy, okay? So that one will be easy to do, right? And then as you, you know, if you make your one little piece, then you can start building more, like off to the side, I go, okay, now I need a bunch of this paint, and I'm going to keep matching that. See, now I'm too brown. So then i got to pick up more black, and then the black darkens it. So now i got to pick up a little bit more white. So let's talk about the properties of color. You have three, there are three things happening every time you squeeze that color out, okay? So every one of these colors has a hue. Now hue is just what color is it, right? So this is, this is orange, this is red, that's the hue. <coughs> it has a value, so how dark is this orange or how light is it? And it has chroma. Now, chroma is how bright or how dull the color is. Now, that's the one that most students, when they're beginning to paint, have a hard time confusing. They confuse that with value. So I'll say to a student, oh, you need to lighten that color. And they'll say, yeah, you're right, it's not bright enough. And I say, no, I didn't say that. The brightness is fine. You need to lighten it. You've made it too dark. You see what I mean? So when you're mixing any color that you're seeing, either from a copy, from a photograph, from nature, 
And you're, you're trying to match that color. And you're getting frustrated. Like, why can't I seem to get that green? Why can't I get that red? It's because you haven't fulfilled those three points. Or you haven't fulfilled one of the three points. And so every time you go to mix a color, ask yourself first, what hue is it? Okay, what am I mixing? A blue, a green? Now that's, that in itself is not as simple as it sounds. Because there are many variations within each clear hue. <coughs> I mean, green can come in many, many different shades of greens. You have yellow greens, blue greens, red greens. You can say the green is cooler, warmer, you know. So, but it starts there. Am I after a green? Am I after a yellow? Am I after a blue? Then ask yourself, how light or how dark is this green? Then ask yourself how bright or how dull it is. And as you're doing that, you're trying to tick off those three things, but eventually you have to describe the color to yourself. So as you're mixing that hue and going, oh, I think my green's a little too blue. It should be a little yellower. And the moment you say that, that's you saying, oh, I see. okay, I'll add more yellow. I just said it needed to be a little bit more yellow. You have to learn how to describe color, all right? And then you might say, oh, it feels too cool, so you need to warm it up. So you go to a warm color to warm it up, not a cool color. Because every color comes in warm and cool. You have warm yellows, cool yellows. You have warm greens, cool greens. Warm blues, cool blues. Okay? 